Eat some bitch. What's up with it, everybody? It's your boy RDR, and welcome back to RDR Food Reviews. And as you can see right in front of your face at the bottom of the screen today, your boy RDR is doing a poutine mukbang. That's right, epic poutine mukbang. Now, I've been wanting to do a poutine mukbang for as long as I can remember. Uh, first time I ever seen poutine, well, shout out to that boy uh, Ken Diamond from K, uh, KBD Productions. Uh, man, from I think he went to like Smokey's Poutinery or Smokes Poutinery or whatever in Canada. If you don't know what poutine is, it's basically French fries, brown gravy, cheese curds, as you see right here. I had to order these cheese curds to come in because them motherfuckers is hard to find, you know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, man, they these suckers, they get made in all different types of ways and whatnot. Uh, I know this looks kind of crazy, but I'm telling you, this combination is A1. You know what I'm saying? You got cheese curds over here, the white cheese curds. They have they have yellow cheese curds too, but um, it's basically French fries, uh, brown gravy, and cheese curds. It's a Canadian staple, and shout out to all my Canadians. I hope that I'm doing you proud and well, you know what I'm saying? But uh, this has definitely been on my radar. You know what I'm saying? As you guys haven't learned by now, I'm a French fry whore, for real. Shout out to the subscriber that was like, RDR is official, man. You you a French fry whore. You know, some people, they just got their own thing. Me, I like to smash on fries. That's my my uh, my uh love, you know what I'm saying? And other people, they like to do, uh like, bowls and shit like that. And you know what? I'm going to do exactly what I love, and that's what I'm doing in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? So... Well, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get a quick moment of prayer and then we're going to um, advance into this uh, story time poutine mukbang video. Father, thank you for this food I'm about to, res I'm about to receive. Help this food nourish my body make me stronger as a person, stronger as a man. And bless those that grow hungry as I pray to you. Please, Father, something in your holy gracious mind in my prayer. Amen. Love you, Father. All right, let's see if we can get a quick thumbnail. There is a light to shine, especially for you and me. Yeah, this important we communicate, which I know about common sense, man. Anyway, all right, so today's story time video is going to be the first time your boy RDR got drunk, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you about this in a second. Here we go, all right? So got thumbnail out the way, prayer out the way. Let's begin. And I'm going to be drinking on some unsweet tea. Out of my beautiful Cowboys uh, cup. That's my baby right there. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so this is going to take place the the end of the school year of my 8th grade year, okay? End of my 8th grade year. Um, Man, okay, so Cuddy, this was the craziest shit that happened, bro. So I found out that, oh man, I just passed the 8th grade by the skin of my teeth. You know what I'm saying? By the skin of that motherfucker. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. I'm on down. Damn, that shit is good. <laughs> and I can hear them. The cheese squeaking in the back of my jaws. Pause. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. This is good. This is good. So, anyway. So, yeah, man. So, I just passed the eighth grade by the skin of my teeth because they had just started some shit where you had to, you know what I'm saying? You had to pass a whole bunch of shit just to get to the next level. Man, craziest shit went down, my nigga. The day after we we got out of school and shit, nigga, motherfucking uh, Brittany, the girl I was dating through fucking uh, middle school, the bitch uh, cheated on your nigga. What <laughs> <laughs> Cheating on your boy with some smooth goddamn Chico the Barge um Hispanic dude. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> nigga. That shit fucked your nigga up, bro. Fuck me up. Cause the nigga that she ran off and ran to the sunset with, this nigga was cockeyed than a motherfucker, my nigga. I'm telling you, this nigga shit. Was like one of them goddamn me uh, plastic toys with the damn dots always circling and shit like that. This nigga hit this nigga here. 
Look like a fucking cyclops in this bitch, nigga. <laughs> Yeah, it's musty pussy bitch. It's a thing then um they evacuated on a nigga. <laughs> so nigga, I was like always, man, as a Pisces, man, sometimes when nigga when we get sad, we get motherfucking sad, Cuddy. And I got sad in the hoe. Mm. And that's what happened, man. Your boy was devastated. So the best thing back in them days, what I did to get over getting uh Cheated on and shit, Cuddy. I went over to my boys and we played the game and shit to get your mind off a of bitch. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we did. I linked up with my nigga Archie from Boy Stam. And we went over to this nigga Daniel house. Cause like if y'all was remember, I was saying I was gonna tell y'all about Daniel. So Daniel, he was uh he was kinda in the huddle, but not really in the huddle. But you know what I'm saying? We kinda fucked with him because he was a rich, light skinned nigga. And that nigga had all the games that niggas couldn't really get. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it was. I damn, I can't get enough of that damn squeaky noise in my jaw. <laughs> so we went over there to this nigga house, right? And him and his daddy was fixing on this busted ass fucking truck. I don't know. Because Daniel got a fetish about fucking cars. This nigga on some goddamn... Tokyo Drift shit. This is the, he one of them type of niggas that like to fix on cars and shit. So, it was like, alright, so, uh, what's up with it, Daniel? So, we're approaching this shit. He's like, nothing much. Uh, getting ready to get my baby running and shit like that. Because his daddy was like, going to give him this, this busted, raggedy ass truck. You know what I'm saying? It was like, because he had like a fetish for like old Fords and shit like that. So, if you into Ford models and shit, then you know what I'm talking about. So we was like, hey man, put that pussy ass truck down and let's get on the game. So we went in the crib. <laughs> went in the crib and jumped on motherfucking Tekken, my nigga. And this nigga, for you know, uh, you know, for, for this nigga, this nerdy nigga, he was really good at motherfucking games. He was, you know, him and Philip, my boy Philip used to have battles and shit. And I really don't know where Philip was on this day. But all I know is that we went over there and jumping on the game and shit. Now this nigga, his daddy, he was uh, he was like like a like a old army vet or whatever, and that nigga had a motherfucking uh, Himalaya mole on his motherfucking thigh on his fucking cheek, nigga. Bitch had a mind of his own, my nigga. Every time you talk to this nigga, let's just say this nigga name was like Melvin or something like that. Every time you talk to this nigga Melvin, this nigga when he talked, the motherfucking mole talk, nigga. That motherfucker would just sit there humming and shit. <laughs> Cause you know he liked the niggas and shit. He was a cool, quiet dude. Cause you know what I do, pay your respects and shit. Then you go in the crib and shit. He had a little bro. He was cool, but that nigga was like more so like a little a little gator snitch looking motherfucker. Then he had his little sister. His sister, she was a man. You already knew. You know what I'm saying? You know how you can just tell like a kid is bad as fuck. You like, oh, she gonna be a little bitch when she grow up. You know what I'm saying? And that was her motherfucking ass. I used to say her motherfucking name was Carla or some shit like that. Yeah, Carla was going to be a future little bitch. And she, you know, even in this present day, she is, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? She was everything niggas thought she was going to be. This motherfucker had a knack for always fucking with this nigga Archie. You know what I'm saying? We be fucking playing on the game and shit. She'll come in that bitch. Playing with that nigga glasses and shit. Like, knocking his glasses off and shit. And all kinds of crazy ass shit. Stand that little heifer, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, we playing taking this shit, and we over here holding this nigga out on a good day, beating the shit this nigga on the game and shit. And then this nigga Archie was laughing because I was kicking this nigga ass, bro. Archie wasn't that good in Tekken, but he was subpar, you know what I'm saying? This nigga was like, what, Archie? You over here fucking making fun of me, man? Motherfucker, my fucking little sister can beat you and shit. And this nigga said, motherfucker, your sister can't whoop me in this game. And nigga said, yeah, the fuck she can. So anyway, this nigga dragged this little, uh, uh, let's say how she was, man. This little fucking eight-year-old, seven-year-old girl on the stick to play this nigga Archie, bro. <sighs> nigga, this nigga got hauled out by a ten-year-old girl in a motherfucking fighting game. <laughs> Nigga, me and this nigga stand with dying laughing at this nigga. Okay. That nigga got so mad, bro, that this nigga here 
walked out that bitch, nigga. And this nigga, um, Daniel would not let up, bro. This nigga would not stop. He wouldn't stop, like, you know, pestering this nigga on the way out the door and shit. Cut him. This nigga Archie swung on that nigga, bro, and missed like a motherfucker. It was like a fresh country breeze, nigga. And he swung on that nigga. I, I never seen that nigga Archie bad before, nigga. He swung, and he missed. And that nigga Daniel, he didn't swing back at that nigga. He just, his daddy told that nigga to go home. So he was like, dang, this nigga Archie got kicked out the crib, bro. So after that motherfucking event... Man, um, that nigga, what's it called, Daddy? Daniel, Daddy left and said, "Hey, man, I'm finna go to the to the market. You know what I'm saying? Finna go to the market and get some shit for later on. Cause nigga, Daddy was talking about cooking. Like he was talking about cooking some homemade spaghetti and shit. And he was like, all right, well, I'm finna go get some some fresh, you know, vegetables and shit like that. All right, cool. All right. So after all that shit went down and stuff, this nigga Daniel was on the phone while me and Stan was playing the game. And he said, bro, he said, bro." Man, I want to go to um, I want to go to this this I want to go to the town next over and go see fucking Samantha. So this nigga here, Daniel, had a fetish for uh for like for Caucasian girls like crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of a mix. You know what I'm saying? The nigga like skinny, like one fucking Caucasian chick. It was cool, but he just had a bad for like this one girl. You know what I'm saying? And she was trailer park trash for real, nigga. On on God, nigga, she was hauled out. <laughs> I was like, nigga, how the fuck we gonna get over there, nigga? What you talking about? He was talking about going over there. This nigga said he wanted to take his daddy truck because his daddy went all the way to like, to like, to Waco. You know what I'm saying? And so we was like, damn, man, he don't know nothing about it. And my mother, she gone over my auntie house and shit. So the niggas was entrusting this nigga, right? Because it was just us three at the house. This nigga here took the keys to that raggedy ass truck because the town we was going to was nothing but like motherfucking, uh, it was like six miles so it's like, all right, fuck it, let's go. Trusting this nigga to drive and shit, right? So anyway, we hop in this bitch ass truck and we ride all the way, nigga, into this into the town next over. Now where this motherfucking girl from at the little that nigga, she lived in the goddamn compound, nigga. I'm telling you, my nigga, it was Confederate flags all over that hoe. And I know Confederate flags don't really mean much to some people, shit, but to a nigga. That motherfucking means danger. <laughs> nigga, you better watch your bitch ass, dude. <laughs> Real nigga spit, nigga. I was like, dang, nigga, what the fuck you done? Took us to, bro. As soon as we pull up, this little Dixie chick looking bitch come bring up motherfucking ass out waiting outside with a homegirl and shit. This bitch, oh, man. That bitch looked that fuck up. The homegirl... Man, she was a old she she was a she was older than uh Samantha nigga, but you could tell nigga she was on that good dope boy. <laughs> so we get out and me and this nigga stand like man, we better go over here and sit here and look crazy with this nigga and his and his motherfucking busted ass bitch. And that nigga's like, yeah, man, so let's just, let's just go see what's going on. So them niggas go, that nigga was just like chilling here for a little bit. I'm going to talk to her and stuff, and I think we finna go to the lake. I'm like, all right, cool. So we looking around this motherfucking um, clubhouse and shit. And then we look, we go in the kitchen like niggas do. We just like, man, let's see what these niggas eating. What's in these niggas' refrigerator and shit? Cut it. It was motherfucking like 30 pack of Bud Ice, my nigga. I had never like forever, nigga. I was just like, dang, nigga, look at that shit. Stan was like, cut it. Nigga, let's take this shit. Let's let's just sip on it. I was like, man, you ever drunk some shit before? You ever drunk beer before? That nigga's like, hell no, nigga. I ain't ever drunk no shit like that before. I said, well, fuck it. Let's do it. These niggas ain't gonna know. It's 30 of these motherfuckers. And old girl, she came in the kitchen. She was like, what are you guys doing? She's like, oh, man, can we have a beer? And she's like, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, you don't even live here. You over here telling niggas they can have what they have. They can have other niggas' beers and shit. So anyway, nigga, we took these hoes. And nigga, man, this nigga sat on the porch. And we started sipping like a motherfucker, nigga. I was like, god damn, this shit's strong. Bitch, supposed to taste like that, nigga? So nigga, after a couple good sips...
things got a little bit more funnier, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Pause, nigga. So shit just started to become more goofy to a nigga. Nigga, we was in this motherfucker on the front porch, ranking, ranking like a motherfucker. <laughs> Ranking like a motherfucker at this nigga, uh, Daniel and this girl. Nigga, these niggas is in here sitting on the couch and shit. You know what I'm saying? And this bitch over here all cupcaking and shit like that. And we over here, this nigga Stan was like super drunk. Cause he was roasting the shit out this nigga. So much to where this nigga Daniel could him and old girl, you know, look meth head bitch. She was in this bitch's, she go run and tell this nigga that we over here roasting this nigga. So Daniel's like, uh, Stan, you over here fucking talking shit? You over here fucking talking shit about me? And that nigga just like, man, go on, man, go on, man. Because I ain't motherfucking Archie. You ain't for the fucking, uh, if I swing on your motherfucking ass. Because he was, he was, he was brolic, nigga. He was drunk and waving. That nigga's like, nigga, I swing on your bitch ass. It's going to connect, nigga. That nigga said, uh, that nigga said, motherfucker, I'll leave you. That nigga said, you ain't gonna leave me with your vanilla cookie skin and face ass, nigga. <laughs> this nigga girl was snickering like a motherfucker. Like, <laughs> this nigga just like, well, fuck you. You a fucking poor piece of shit. I'll fucking leave you and rob here. I said, nigga, your tacky ass ain't finna fucking leave me, nigga. You fake ass Vin Diesel looking motherfucker. Damn. This nigga here. Try to hop in the motherfucking truck with the girl and shit, and old girl, in the front seat of this truck, and try to leave me and this nigga standing in this pussy ass compound. Nigga, you know me and this nigga jumped on the back of that hoe like bitch ass nigga, you ain't finna leave us. This nigga over here, crank up, he try to crank up the fucking truck and the motherfucker wouldn't even turn on, my nigga. <laughs> this nigga over here. Trying to get that bitch gas and shit. Nigga, that bitch would not come to life. <laughs> oh, oh, God. That nigga said, man, it won't cut on. That nigga asked her. He said, hey, you got some, uh. That nigga said, hey, you can, excuse me. He said, do you got some, uh, some jumping cables? She said, we do, but that car right here in the yard, that motherfucker don't work either. That nigga was sad, nigga. Oh, God, he was scared, nigga. So that nigga had to do the one thing he didn't want to do because he knew he was federally fucked. Call his busted ass, pimple face ass daddy, nigga. So this nigga called his daddy. His daddy was hot than a motherfucker. He come all the way from wake up to this pussy ass town, nigga, to come scoop him up. He fucking went ape shit on that nigga in front of him and his girl, nigga. And I forgot to tell y'all, this nigga Stan and Daniel, they were like first cousins and shit. So this nigga got on Stan ass too. Like, why did you say anything to him? Why would you sit there and let your cousin take the vehicle knowing damn well he ain't got no license? And all this shit, shit this and that. And that nigga was just like, man, Uncle M, man, I can't, man. That nigga do whatever he want to do. Mm. And then, so his daddy was taking over the truck. They jump started at home. We had to get in the car with that nigga Carnival. His Carnival escaping ass mama. His mama was goddamn mean. Bitch had to be like, oh, bitch had to be at least like 4'11", nigga. She was short than a hoe, nigga. But nigga, she looked like she escaped from the motherfucking Carnival, nigga. Like these niggas was looking for her. At least that nigga Archie used to say that shit all the time, bro. <laughs> Couldn't even behind her. See that motherfucker when driving this shit. Cause she over here lecturing this nigga. Getting on his motherfucking ass. And we over here laughing. Just laughing. Cause this nigga getting charged up. Told that nigga he getting grounded nigga. We was like grounded nigga. Nigga you black. You get grounded nigga. You supposed to get a whooping nigga. <laughs> so me and this nigga stand fucked up. We pulled up. And so we had to leave. But we had went inside to go get our shit. My nigga. We walked by that motherfucking kitchen. Hung over in the motherfucker. I saw that big ass pot of spaghetti. Me and that nigga looked at each other. Nigga, we stuck our whole hand in that hole, just grabbed that bitch and start eating that bitch. This nigga Chris, this little nigga Chris, this nigga come down serious, dang your brother. That nigga said, What the fuck are you guys doing? You can't be doing that shit. <laughs> Bitch ass out of here, nigga. I'm hogging it the hoe. And nigga said, Mama! Mama, they eat spaghetti, nigga. We 
ran out the back door of that bitch, nigga. <laughs> Nigga, we ran out the back door of that whole nigga with some motherfucking spaghetti and some meatball on that nigga. We were eating that shit like a motherfucking chopper down the street, nigga. Nigga, that was the funniest goddamn day ever, nigga. Oh, man. But that was the first time a nigga ever tasted that sweet liquor, sweet alcohol, that sweet beer, nigga. That shit was A1, nigga. I hated it. It had to be Bud Ice. I wish my first love was like Corona or Modelo or fucking Bud Light or, you know what I'm saying, shit like that, but... It is what it is, but you know what? That's that's uh that was my first time ever drinking, so uh I'll never forget that day for the rest of my life. <sighs> that everybody is my poutine. Oh shit, got some brown gravy on my beard. That was my poutine story time move bang video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's your boy RDR, and like I always say, man, hey, food is a gift, so please give thanks. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you really don't like my shit, if you really don't like my video, it's all good, Cuddy, because I still love you like I always have, bitch. It's your boy, RDR, and I'm signing out. God bless y'all. Take care already. I love you guys, and I'll see you very, very soon. Thank you guys for rocking with your boy, RDR, the right way. And I hope I'm doing you guys a great service, bringing you new items, and um, giving you the entertainment needs that you like about the crazy shit that's going on in my life. So I love you guys. And I'll see y'all soon. God bless.